Hi everybody, I'm back with a video and I got a really good question from one of our members. So I'm going to answer that question and also it was a little bit more um, fitness related and a little bit more motivational related. Now let me interrupt myself really quickly and let you know that if that is not your thing, that is cool. There is a lesson in this for all of us. If you have a loved one who is incarcerated, even if you don't and you just happen to stumble across this video, if you lack motivation or feel like you get down and then get stuck there and can't pull yourself out of it, there's a lesson in there for you. And then while we are in the process of doing that, since it's a little bit more on the um, fitness and health and wellness aspect versus 100% prison life, even though it could be used in that area, I have, I wanted to do um, an unboxing with you guys because you guys are always very can I say you guys more time in a video? You are always interested in um, what I'm eating, what I'm doing to work out, and also the products that I use because I tend to use natural, paraben-free, um, any kind of organic and healthy ingredients that are affordable. So here is one, we'll do an unboxing, and then I guess we'll do the question first so anybody who's not interested in this can hop off. But, um, definitely a good one. First of all, look at this packaging. Yay, I'm here. Like how adorable. So stay tuned for that. Hang on for that. But let me open up my iPad because I have the question that I want to read you guys. And also I have an answer, but full disclosure, I went into my notes. I took about two hours the other day and I wrote out a really long response to this. And then I went to go get it today and I never saved my response. So I just quickly jotted down off of memory my notes. Of course, the first time I put so much work into it, it probably came out better, but we're kind of gonna, we're going to either go off of memory, go off the notes that I jotted down, and hopefully it'll be just as good as the other one. And if not, I can always come back and add to it later. We can do a part two, we can have some discussion in the comments, etc. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Ro. I am the founder of Strong Prison Wives and Families, and I use my years of experience to help prison wives and family members feel supported, encouraged, empowered, and educated while their loved ones are gone, but also long after their loved ones come home so they can get out, they can stay out, we can beat statistics, we can break stigma, and you guys can live happily ever after without going into the revolving door of the prison system that is so common. 80% um, of people are a statistic and are recidivists at this point. Um, however, aside from my prison wife life um, journey that I share with you, 99% of the time. I am also very passionate about health and wellness. My husband is a lifer. So I always say I have to, we both have to stay in tip top condition and shape until we can um, resolve this little issue that stands between us living our happily ever after. So um, health and wellness has always been my thing even before we got back together. It's always been his thing. It was something that brought us back together that we mutually, it didn't really bring us back together, but we mutually have it in common. Um, so it's something that I'm very, very, very passionate about. I used to compete in fitness competitions. I was the state champion in fitness for uh, a little bit, a little while back. So um, a lot of my examples that I use to share with you guys are fitness related or gym related, but because that's where I always am. And that's probably where this question came from. So she said, hi Ro, I need a few words of encouragement. I've been at my goal weight for several years. I love exercise and I am a total gym rat. Girl, me too. However, I've been careless with my eating for the last few days. How do you get back on the way again after a few days of cheating? How do you deal with discouragement and stop it from snowballing? Thanks so much. I appreciate your willingness to share your struggles related to food and body image. So um, within this question is another question that isn't fitness related. And that's why I want you guys that aren't into this to stick around and listen, because she said, how do you deal with discouragement and stop it from snowballing? Well, there's so many different areas of discouragement that you can, it's so many different areas in your life where you could be discouraged, especially if you're a prison wife or family member and you made your right here, which is most likely how you found me. We go through so much discouragement with things like staff getting on our nerve or getting the best of us trying to get us down things like not being able to get into visit because of what you're wearing things like a denied appeal things like him going into solitary confinement the whole um there's so many 
discouragements throughout, you know, from the beginning where sentencing, which might not have been very what you wanted, it might have been worse, it might have even been better, but he's still getting ripped away from you, you, got, you guys understand. So it, this doesn't necessarily just have to be a health and wellness related gym and food related video. So number one, first and foremost, do not beat yourself up when you're going through a little bit of a downfall, when you feel like you've fallen off the wagon. You're human. It's normal. We're going to acknowledge that it happened. We're going to say, I needed that time off. I needed that break. I needed whatever it is that I needed. So now I can get myself back on the wagon and move forward. But I'm not going to let you sit here and tell yourself you're horrible or you're so fat now or you're so out of shape now. That is not okay. Be kind to yourself. Know it was a phase. Know your body needed it. Your mind needed it. You needed it for whatever reason that you needed it. You needed the rest, the relaxation, the refeed, whatever it is that you needed. And now you're going to move on. So we're not going to beat ourselves up. We're not going to look in the mirror and grab parts like we choose to do often because that's unfortunately how we're raised go back to the last video that i posted i think depending on how i post what order i post these in it's an old video that i made on facebook um facebook live and it's all about affirmations actually and how you could speak to yourself more kindly and i gave you some affirmations in there and i also have a lot of videos that i'll link below about how to be confident, how to speak to yourself more kindly um, with tricks and exercises in there for that. So no beating yourself up. Number two, best analogy I ever heard about this was when I was back first starting out in fitness, that's when internet forums were first like hitting the scene and um, somebody in there had posted very similarly to you, to this member, that she was off the wagon. So, and she was beating herself up and an admin in the forum came in and she worded it so beautifully and she gave the best analogy. She said, let's say you get up in the morning and you get ready for work and you go outside and your car has a flat tire. What do you do? It's disappointing. It sucks. Do you pop the other four tires or do you fix your one flat, put on a donut and move on with your day? So the analogy is, if you eat a cookie, that's okay. If you have a flat tire, that's okay. You fix the flat tire, you eat the cookie, and you move on from it. You don't pop the other three tires so you're left in a worse position. You don't say, well, I ate a cookie so today is shot to hell. Now I'm going to eat the rest of the bag of cookies, wash it down with a box of chips, and then grab some ice cream out of the freezer because, you know, while I'm at it, I'm down in the dumps. I might as well keep going and I'll start tomorrow. Think about that next time you do that last supper type of night you know i do this often i have four sisters so there's five girls and we have one brother and my brother used to joke with us saying i've never seen so many diets start on a monday in my whole entire life because come tuesday afternoon after dieting for one day somebody would slip up and then the rest of us would be like well you messed up so now we all get to cheat until we start on monday because you can't start a diet unless it's monday why would you start in the middle of the week you're just popping the rest of the tires on the car putting yourself in a worse position than you started in. So just use that analogy to get yourself out of that mentality of, well, I'm already so far in, I might as well keep going. Because you're only all you're going to do is put yourself in a worse position. Number three, oftentimes for women especially, well, for women, period, because most of our members and um, people that watch my videos are women. But if you guys, men, are watching as well, the women in your life usually go through this. Usually when you fall off the wagon, it's a hormonal reason that's contributing to it. So the best resource that I've ever found related to this is a book called Woman Code by Woman Code. And the author is Alicia Viti or Alicia v VT. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but I will link the book below. I actually made a video, a vlog, about my experience when I listened to the book on audio driving out to visit one time and I told you all about it. But in there, she explains why we get PMS. She explains why we get really hungry when we get PMS. She explains why you don't want to work out and you feel really weak throughout certain points in your cycle. And then she gives you ways around it. So she'll tell you how to eat. She'll tell you what to eat. She'll tell you exactly how to work out each week of your cycle that is most beneficial to you and your hormones because sometimes we can work out in a way or we can eat in a way that is 
counterproductive to our bodies and our hormonal makeup. Now, total disclaimer and disclosure, I don't work out like this because like you, I'm a gym junk junkie and I go to my classes and I do what's prescribed for me. But I'll tell you this, when I have PMS, it's really hard for me to get myself there. So first of all, again, go back to number one, don't beat yourself up because a lot of times it's around hormones. Number two, I suggest that resource, Woman Code by Lisa Vitti or Alicia Vitti, Vitti, VT, I don't know. Um, but I will link it below for you guys or in the cards somewhere up here. Um, number, let's see, four. Get yourself an accountability buddy. Now that doesn't have to be somebody in person. I am in New Jersey and I have an accountability in buddy in Florida. And what we personally do, what works for us is we will just check in with each other online or through text or through hangouts messages every single day. When I get my workout in and when I'm done with my day of eating, I will text her and be like, I got it in. She will do the same with me. She actually is amazing. She just started an Excel sheet for us where there's checks, me, her, and her daughter um, with things we need to do, workout, drinking water, eating, and then for her daughter, it's floss flossing and brushing her teeth. Um, so, and to be honest, I could up my flossing game as well. So no hate to her daughter, no shade to her daughter. That's what works for us. But you can do an accountability buddy that way because you know what? There's this level of competition among human beings and it's not, even if you're not the most competitive person, knowing that somebody else did it and they're relying on you, or they're, you're going to have to check in with them is enough. It's almost just enough to get you out of that funk. So you can get an accountability buddy through, I'm always looking for new ones, through Facebook, through one of our groups. Um, you can do it on my, the MyFitnessPal app. You can find people in your contact list that do it. You can find people on the app, random people that do it. You can do it through um, one of those, uh, like, a, what do you call those things? Why am I drawing a blank? Um, a Fitbit. They, though, you know, you can compete getting steps with people. You can compete that compete and they could be your accountability buddy. So get yourself an accountability buddy and it will totally, totally, totally help you um, get out of your rut. Now, the next one, number five is do the 24 hour rule. I always employ the 24 hour rule for all of my members that have been with me for more than like five minutes. You guys know my 24 hour rule. And usually I employ this when, or I teach this when you're feeling down and depressed around something with being a prison wife. So if something gets you down, instead of let, letting it get you down, and then just like you said, you get stuck there, give yourself 24 hours. Give yourself 24 hours to eat the crap. Give yourself 24 hours to take off of your workout. Give yourself 24 hours if you're, you're not into eating well and you're not into working out to stay under the covers, to call out of work maybe, to be depressed, to cry, to not answer the phone for your friends, that type of thing, 24 hours. And then that doesn't mean the depression is going to be over. That doesn't mean that you're going to want to go to the gym. That doesn't mean that you're going to want to eat a salad instead of some pizza. But 24 hours later, you allow, you say, that's it. I don't think about it. I just do. I go into my mode of what I have to do, you know, my routine, no thinking, just doing 24 hours of cheating and then you're done and then you move on and then you pull yourself out of it. You blow up the tire, you put the donut on your car and you go. So 24 hours max is what I will allow you and then you're going to move on. Um, okay, number six, this one is huge. It probably should have been number one is what is your why? I want you to get very, very clear on why you're doing this, on why you want to eat healthy, on why you want to work out, on why you want to stay in your prison relationship when it gets really hard. Because when you're really clear on your why, then that gets rid of the noise in your head or that gets, it helps keep you motivated on the days that you don't want to go. So for example, my why for a long time when I was competing was because I had to look a certain way on stage to be competitive in my sport. Also, I would always tell myself I wanted to be the best. I wanted to break, even if I didn't look the best, even if I didn't have the best physique at my competition, I wanted to make sure I brought the best package there. Or I would tell myself there's 
the person who wins first place is going to be at the gym at five o'clock in the morning getting in her cardio. So I will be at the gym at 4.45 in the morning to get in my cardio. Now it's a little bit different because I don't compete and I really exercise and eat healthy for optimal health and wellness and to avoid disease, especially hereditary diseases that are run very rampant in my genetics, in my family. So that is my why. So when I feel like I want to skip the gym for a few days, I remember the time when I was at the hospital when the nurse asked me she was taking my blood pressure I was going into surgery and she's like are you a runner because your pulse rate is very very low in a good way where an athlete's pulse rate usually is versus the average person is about 60 I was about the average healthy in shape person there was a caveat to this is about you know I would think I was like 40 45 if you're not an athlete and it's low like that that's not, that's like troublesome. But if you are an athlete, that's wonderful. That's amazing. And that's why I was, you know, that, or I think about my mom who's so, so, so sick and so ill. And I want to avoid that. I don't ever want to see anybody go through that, that I love, but I also don't want to be the one that's suffering like that. So I think about that, you know, maybe if you have kids, you want to be here for your children. You want to be here to meet your grandchildren. You want to be here to watch your son or daughter walk down the aisle or be the one to walk them up the aisle. You, what is your why? Why do you do this? What motivates you? What gets you out of bed? Why do you want to go to the gym? Is it to lose a few pounds? But underneath that, what's underneath that? Because you want it to be a really, really deep why. To sit, fit into a size, whatever, that's a, it's an okay why. But to be around to see your grandkids, that's your why. To live long enough to see my life or husband, who doesn't deserve that sentence, obviously a life or for a robbery, which we'll get into another time, but that's, that's my why. That's what keeps me going. To lose five pounds, eh, I've lost and gained hundreds of pounds throughout my life. It's not really going to be anything um, that's going to get me to go into the gym when I feel like eating chocolate instead. So get really clear on your why and make sure it's a really deep one. And if you want, if you need some accountability and you feel confident enough to do it, post it in the comments below so we can all keep you accountable. Um, number, what's next? Seven get more sleep. So this is really crazy, but it's correlated. While you sleep, your brain creates serotonin, the feel good hormone. Um, the second way that your brain creates the feel good hormone serotonin is through carbohydrates. So when sugars, especially chocolate. So when you're not getting enough sleep and you cut yourself short, you'll actually crave carbs, specifically simple sugars, because your body's just looking for a quick fix to create and to make serotonin to keep you happy because it didn't get that burst of it. It wasn't able to make it because you didn't get, it didn't have enough time because you didn't sleep enough the night before. So doctor, doctor recommended it's seven and a half to eight hours of sleep a night. Um, and if you're not getting that, if you're cutting yourself really short, that could be why you're craving. It's, it's amazing. Like I know my body so well when I don't get sleep, the way that I crave sugar and carbs and coffee is unbelievable. It's night and day compared to when I have a full night's rest and I'm feeling well, I don't crave it as much. So just watch your sleep and make sure you're getting enough of it. Number eight is less stress. I mean, I don't even need to go into this, but when you're stressed out, you don't want to move. You don't want to work out. You're exhausted because your body's on like fight or flight all day long. I'm not going to get too into this because first of all, I'm sure you already know it. Next one is I have tons of videos, past videos about how to de-stress, why you're stressed, um, and exercises to help yourself get through times of stress. And I will link them below if I can find them. I need to start making playlists. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just starting to get back into this YouTube thing. So once I find them, I will link them somewhere in the cards or below. But in the meantime, you could do your own research on stress. You could find my old videos. You can Google it. But stress is a huge one for um, cravings, for weight gain, and for feeling tired. Number, what are we up to? Um, nine, take baby steps. So instead of saying tomorrow, I'm going to do this cold turkey, I'm only going to eat fresh fruit and vegetables. I'm only going to eat an apple for breakfast, carrot sticks for lunch and a salad for dinner. And then you're not going to make it for two days because you're going to be freaking hungry because all you had was 500 calories max the day before. I want you to take baby steps. So this week for one week, I just want you to add water add more water. That's going to keep you full. That's going to get things moving. It's going to get you out of a dehydrated state, which with 
I can't speak, which makes you feel hungry, but in actuality, you're thirsty. So for one week, don't change your diet, don't do anything else, drink more water. Then week two, I want you to cut out simple sugars. I want you to cut out the sodas. I want you to cut out the candies. I want you to cut out the four teaspoons of sugar that you're putting into the coffee. I want you to cut out dessert after every meal or even after one meal. I just want you to cut out simple sugars. Water, simple sugars, everything else is the same. Keep your fruit in, keep your chips in, keep your pizza in, whatever that is. And then every week I want you to add or eliminate something else add something healthy, eliminate something that's unhealthy, whatever your vice may be, whether it's cut out your alcohol one week and then the next week you're going to cut out your processed foods. So I don't need to tell you how to diet because I know you guys all do and I know we all follow something very, very different. But instead of going cold turkey and jumping into a pool head first, I want you to dip in your toe so then you can slowly get yourself through it versus going all in burning and crashing because it's not sustainable, it's not livable, and you're done in two days, and then you're back to the same place you were before but feeling worse because you feel like a failure. You're not. You just need to take baby steps and one thing or two things or whatever works for you at a time instead of 45 things at once. Number 10. Oh, my foot's asleep. Don't beat yourself up. Did we talk about this in number one? I guess it was so important I put it twice. Don't beat yourself up. Number 10 slash 11 because I accidentally put the same one twice. Recognize how you feel when you're eating crappy and then recognize how you feel when you're eating well. So when I was little, my parents used to love to take us out to the diner. We would go to church on Sundays and then all of their church friends, we'd all meet up at the diner. And I loved for some reason at that point, chocolate chip pancakes. I would eat chocolate for some reason because I was a kid. I would eat chocolate chip pancakes. I would drown them in syrup. And I just remember always feeling really icky after we went to the diner. And I never really understood why because I didn't understand sugars and I didn't understand insulin at that point. But to this day, personally, I know I cannot eat sugars, simple sugars with breakfast, and I can't eat just carbs with breakfast. Or like I can't just eat a bagel. I cannot eat pancakes. They make me feel like crap. I can't eat anything um, that is, I, I need some sort of protein and I need some fat in my breakfast. That's what I personally need. Otherwise, it spikes my blood sugar too high and then I crash and then I crave more and it spikes it higher and then you crash even lower and it's just this vicious cycle. I know personally I will feel like crap if I eat only a bagel or only simple carbs for breakfast. What does your body need? What doesn't work for you? And then manipulate your days around that. So when you're in this slump and you're feeling bad, you just feel bloated. You feel tired. You feel heavy. You feel like you don't want to move. Start recognizing, even if you have to keep a journal, how you're feeling right now. Then I want you to recognize how you feel or felt when you were eating well. You had energy. You felt light on your feet. You could move. You could get down on the floor and play with the kids. You felt slim. You felt confident. Whatever that looks like to you. And now when you're feeling in these times like, oh, I'm in a slump, recall the times that you felt good. Remember how it feels when you're eating well so you want to do that. So you want to eat well. And then here's like, this is all wrapped up into this, but it's another tip. Trick yourself emotionally, trick yourself mentally. Okay. So instead of saying, I don't eat that, I can't eat that. Empower yourself to say, I choose not to eat that. I feel better when I eat this way. Um, just flip your perspective. Talk to yourself in a positive way. Instead of saying, I feel gross when I eat blah, blah, blah. Say, I feel great when I eat blah, blah, blah. It, it is such a small little trick, but it is huge because then it gives you control over the food. It gives you control over the situation. It does not give allow you to give away your power to the food. It does not allow you to give away your power to any situation where you feel powerless or out of control. So just think about how you're wording things. Think about how you're talking to yourself. Think about what you're saying to other people. No, I'm sorry, I can't go out. I can't order the french fries. I can't split that burger with you. I'm not allowed to. Because what you're doing is just 
making yourself want it more. You're dangling a carrot. But if you say, you know what, right now I choose not to eat that. I know what pizza tastes like and I will never not have pizza again. I'm just choosing not to eat it today. Just for today, I'm doing that. And then like 25 just for today's in a row, 24 just for today's I'm choosing not to eat sugar are going to make an enormous difference. So I hope I'm making sense. Um, yeah. And so I guess this goes along the same lines. I'm kind of like mixing everything together, but number 12 was take ownership of it. Don't be a victim. Don't point fingers. Don't blame. So back when Adam was applying for clemency, when it was like the very last day, it was over. It was set in stone that he didn't get it from president Obama. I was crushed. I remember I was talking to my friend Joe and I was like, I'm stopping at the store on the way home. I got five, you guys, one, two, three, four, five bags of chips. I got a pint of ice cream. I got two different types of candy bars and you, I don't even eat like that. Like I don't even like that type of stuff. I don't love processed foods, but I sat on my couch and I ate it all day and I wallowed in the misery because it was President Obama's fault and it was, I was the victim. And, um, the reality is how do I say this? It's on you. It's, I'm sorry, I was mixing up two notes. There's always something that you can do to make this better and to pull yourself out of that. So instead of saying, why is this happening to me? This is always happening to me. When's it going to be my turn? When's it going to be our turn? I'm good. I, I have to stop at the store and buy five bags of chips because I feel like crap, even though one day in 10 years, it's not going to make a difference. We're not going to beat ourselves up for doing it. But if we can avoid that or you know, five days later you stop it because habits, habits form quickly, bad habits form quickly. So one day it's five bags of chips. The next day on the way home, next day on the way home, you're like, Oh, I could go for some chips. And then all of a sudden it's two weeks later and you've bought yourself five bags of chips every day for two weeks. So you're going to take power over it and say, you know what? I'm not going to let that situation win. It's two totally separate things. Adam being denied clemency has nothing to do with me eating crap. And I need to acknowledge the feelings about clemency, not push them down, not stuff them down with food. So do you understand the difference? Like if you're sad because your husband's in the hole, let's talk about why you're sad and your husband's in the hole and let's find you positive coping skills versus denying that you're upset that your husband's in the hole and stuffing it down with food and, and laying on the couch and watching TV and not moving your body. And you, you guys understand. So, um, expectations. So again, this goes back to your why, but also I've learned as I've gotten older that I health is eating for health. That's eating for optimal wellness, to fight off disease, to um, heal disease, to prevent disease. Eating is not 100% for aesthetics. Otherwise, you're going to possibly get yourself into bad habits. So when I was competing in fitness, I was ripped. I had 8% body fat. I looked like the epitome of health. People would tell me all the time, you're so healthy. What do you do? I was basically dancing on death's door the day that I would go up for a competition. I would eat crap, eat processed stuff because it was low carb. I would not drink water for three days to try to get my muscles and my veins to show. It was just not healthy. I was eating and drinking. And again, it was only very short term because it was for a competition, but I was doing it for aesthetics for a certain look. I wasn't doing it for health. So I want to pass along that to you guys. So you don't make the state, the same mistakes I did where what does healthy look like to you? What is health to you? What is optimal health and wellness? Does that mean getting off your medication? Does that mean not getting on medication? Does that mean being able to run a mile? Does that mean what does it look like to you past losing five pounds, looking better in my jeans, fitting into a smaller size of jeans. Because like I said before, I've been every jean size from a size zero to a size 14 and I'm only size three, I'm only five three. So I'm not a size three anymore, but I've been every size in between. It never stopped me when I was going up to say I was once a size zero. It only made me beat myself up more or it made me do really unhealthy things so I could fad diet and starve myself back to the size two or zero not cool. You need more underneath that. It's about health. It's about, you know, my friend 
sticks pepperoni slices in the microwave and makes them into chips. So she takes cured processed meat and throws it in the microwave that destroys the molecules in your food to burn it, which is known as a carcin carcinogen, causes cancer, to create chips so she's not eating carbs. That is so unhealthy. So I just, and I don't want to get into a rant on what I think is healthy versus what you guys think is healthy versus what is actually healthy because there's so much conflicting evidence out there. But, and I'm like way far end after, you know, doing so much research with my mom and her cancer, but, um, and trying to keep her, help her get back on track and to keep my whole family healthy. But the whole point is don't do things that you know are unhealthy to try to lose weight because you're trying to get to some sort of number on a scale. Because honestly, like I have so many friends that are like, I want to get back down to 135. And I'm like, yeah, but you're 5'10". Like 135 would be so ugly and sickly and skinny and skeletor on you. So don't chase the number on a scale. Don't chase the pant size. Don't chase a body fat percentage. Don't chase, you know, I want to lose this many pounds. Chase health because losing weight and getting lean will be a natural byproduct of that. I pinky promise. Pinky promise, you guys. Okay, gosh, I am going on a tangent. Um, I could talk about this forever. So let's talk about really quick. Oh, okay, so really quick, we're gonna talk about getting back into the gym and then we're gonna talk about dealing with disappointments for you guys that aren't into health and wellness, that's cool, but dealing with disappointments you can bring into prison life life. So working out, get a partner. Um, me personally, I go to a group tra training gym. Um, take up a class at the gym because there is a certain time that you have to be there for that class. There's a certain time that you have to be there to meet your partner. You're more likely than I'm going to go to the gym at some point today, but I'm going to sit here and watch TV for 20 minutes first. I need a break after work. You're not going to get up and go to the gym. I've done it to myself a hundred times a year. Like I've done it a million times at this point. So if you can either set a designated time, if you have nobody to go with, or my opinion is take a class because you will never work out as hard on your own as you do when somebody's watching you, whether it be a partner with a class, with a trainer. And there are so many things you can do now. Like if you go to Groupon or class pass, you can find really affordable, cheaper alternatives to like joining a gym. That's a ridiculous amount of money because it's group training. There are affordable things out there for you. You just have to find what you like. Um, pack your clothes and shoes with you and either go before work and pack your work clothes or go straight from work. So you don't have time to think about it. So you can't go home. So you, you know, this is my schedule for me personally. I work eight to four. I change in the bathroom downstairs and I make it to meet my workout partner at my group training gym <laughs> right after work. So all of these things are routines that I've built into my life very strategically because I am the laziest person in the whole entire world. So if I leave, if I'm left up to my own, if I am left up to my own devices, I don't know why I'm so tongue tied, but I always am. Then I won't go. So, um, make it a no brainer for yourself and it'll be easy to go. So just say tomorrow I'm out of my rut. Tomorrow I'm going to the gym. Tomorrow I'm going to the gym at six o'clock. I will bring my clothes to work. I will change at, in the locker room of the gym. I will go to the gym at six o'clock. Maybe my friend Barbara will meet me. Something like that. Um, Number three, give yourself non-food rewards. So is there a bikini that you want? Is there a pair of shoes that you want? Is there, you know, a massage that you want? One of my girlfriends, every 10 pounds, she was, she was um, pretty overweight. So every 10 pounds that she lost, she would treat herself to a manicure and a pedicure, but she would not allow herself to get one in between. Didn't matter if she had a visit, didn't matter if she had a wedding, didn't matter anything, unless she dropped 10 pounds. Now that's a lot because she had, she said a decent amount of weight to lose. I don't know what her goal was. I don't know how much she wanted to lose, but you know, it could be for every week that you stay on your diet. Because remember, I just said, we're not, we're trying not to count. Um, you know, for every week that you count, stay on your diet, you will treat yourself to X, Y, and Z non-food rewards. So I don't want you to get into the habit of, you know, three weeks clean and I'm going to treat myself to a big ice cream sundae because that's just bad habits that you're keeping going. You're just prolonging them the time in between. Okay. Um, number four, do what you love at the gym. So fitness doesn't have to be grinding on a treadmill for an hour every day because that is boring AF. I am the first person to tell you grinding on the treadmill is not my thing. I found what I like. What do you like? Working out looks different to any, everybody. I know people that have lost tons of weight doing, 
dance classes in their own house just putting on music or Zumba classes or there's these really crazy surf classes. There are classes all over the place. Kickboxing classes are so fun and they're group like um, CKOs and all those kickboxing gyms are popping up all over the place. You could always find something on Groupon. I have girls that can't do anything intense or strenuous. They're, they have problems with their knees or their joints. They do yoga and love it. Try a few different things. Pull up YouTube videos. You could do it for free or workouts on demand and then try them. See what you like. If you don't like it, don't do it again. Find something else. Find what works for you. Find what you love that you want to do and that'll get you out of your rut. Maybe mix it up. On Mondays, you go to CrossFit. On Tuesdays, you do yoga. On Wednesdays, you go in your backyard and you dance your little hiney off. Whatever that is. What do you like? What do you want to do? What's going to get you keep to keep going back? Um, okay, so dealing with disappointment in your life. Um, I think it's just a matter of, like I said before, sorry, I was reading my notes and it's, I, I already touched on it, but like I was talking about with clemency and how I was really down. And for a few days I didn't work out. And for a few days I would eat chips every day. And I don't even like chips. I don't know why I did it. And that's okay. You have to allow yourself to feel your feelings. You have to get in touch with what is truly bothering you. And in this life, we have so many disappointments, but that's exactly why I created Strong Prison Wives, the community, Strong Prison Wives and Families, because then you'll get support from the people you love. You can tap people like me and be like, Ro, this is happening, I, I feel horrible, and you're gonna get 45 different hugs, virtual hugs, maybe in-person hug, hugs if you meet somebody online who's in your area, but people who will allow you to cry on their shoulder and who can truly empathize with what you're going through, and then people, if you want me to be the one, I will gladly do it, who will give you a loving reality smack and say, okay, sweetheart, you chose this. I know it sucks, I live it every single day. I've dealt with more disappointments or with just as many disappointments as the next person. But you choose this. You gotta pick yourself up, you gotta brush yourself off, and you gotta go on with the motions of life. You're not gonna wanna do it. You're gonna wanna stay in bed, you're gonna wanna tell everyone to go scratch, and you're going to want to check out of life. But that's not reality. So yes, it's still gonna suck, but I need you to get up after a couple days, go through the motions of it. Just do it. It's going to suck. There's been times where I was wiping away tears at the gym. There were times that I remember one time specifically, it was towards the, toward the end of when Obama was um, releasing a clemency list of approved names and then a denial list. And so one day a clemency list came out and it was like, there were only like two or three left that were going to come out and then it was done for us. So the approved list came out and Adam and I, we were sure Adam was going to be on that one and he wasn't. And I had just gotten home from work and I was sobbing. I was a mess. And I said, you know what? I just got to go. I have to go to the gym. I got to get this energy out. I didn't want to be there. I started crying on the treadmill. I was in a class at Orange Theory Fitness, another great fun one. And I, I just wiped it away and I was like, I could do this. And then I was getting in the car after the class, after an hour long, like intense workout. And that's exactly what I needed. I got those endorphins. I got out the, you know, the, the crazy energy and my phone rang and it was Adam. And the first thing he said was, you sound good. And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. And it was what I needed to be okay. It sucked. I cried on the treadmill. I cried all the way to the gym that day. I cried on the treadmill. I was angry on the treadmill. I was not talking to anybody in there. I felt like crap. I didn't want to be there. But then once I got into it, I felt good. There are so many days in a row that you might feel like crap and you don't want to be doing it, but just keep your head down, go through the motions because one day that sun will come out and you're going to feel better. And you are going to be so thankful that you did it because Adam taught me this and I never wanted to believe it. But two weeks after you stop working out, two weeks, your lung conditioning starts going down. Now I will caveat that and say, I had foot surgery and I couldn't do anything for 12 weeks on that foot. I got back into the gym. It kind of sucked, but it wasn't like I had never worked out a day in my life. Your muscles remember and your conditioning does come back. But what he was telling me was in two weeks, it starts 
to go down a little bit, but it starts. So you remember that you don't want to lose your conditioning. You've worked so hard. You've put so much blood, sweat and tears into your workouts, into getting into whatever shape it is right now. Even if it's that you huff and puff walking from the door of your house to the car, but you couldn't do that before you had to take breaks. You got yourself to that spot. Now, what if you couldn't run? I remember when I first started running, hated it. My friend calls me, let's go to the track. I was like, oh, he was a state champion in track when we back when we were in high school. This is like 20 years later. He's like, come on, we're going to the track. I could not run, not run, jog. I couldn't jog 100 yards, which is one small straight of the track. Couldn't do it. Could not do it. Could not do it. I had to take a break. I cried on the way home because I literally cry about everything. Now, I, I mean, I think like a few months later, well... I don't know how long later, but I ran a 5k. Now I run a 5k like that. Like one time my friend's like, do you want to run a 5k? And I go, yeah. And Adam goes, are you going to do it? You haven't trained. And I'm like, it's just a 5k huge difference. And I'm not saying that you guys have to be runners. I still hate running. What I am saying is remember that because had I just not been able to run and I hated it and I stopped and I never built up that conditioning, then I'd never be able to sit here and say to you guys, oh, it's just a 5k. It's just three miles. And that might not be it for you. Like people, three miles, I have to give myself credit, is a lot more than I did before. But just remember, you don't want to lose what you worked so hard to gain. Okay? So I hope that helps. I'm sorry, I babbled for 40 minutes straight. I should not have done that. My videos get way too long sometimes. But I hope that you guys were able to take some of this for either to motivate you to get back um, on the wagon or to motivate you through disappointments with Prison Wife Life. I absolutely love getting questions. I absolutely love knowing that I'm answering what you need from me. So please, in the comments below, let me know what you want to hear more of. Let me know how I could help you. Let me know, you know, and it doesn't just have to be um, Prison Wife stuff or fitness stuff. It could be anything that I could help you with. Oh, I totally forgot to open my package. Um, but we're 40 minutes in, so I'll do that on a separate video. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots and lots of love from my heart to yours. I will see you guys in the next one. But in the meantime, stay happy, stay healthy, get back on the wagon. Love you guys. Bye.